Okay, chapter two was on Newton's first law of motion. Chapter four is on Newton's second law, which is force causes acceleration. We're going to talk about friction, the difference between mass and weight, uh, how mass resists acceleration, and talk about free fall and non free fall. So force causes acceleration. Here's a guy pushing on a crate and it could speed up. The acceleration depends on the net force, which is the sum of all the forces acting on an object. And acceleration is directly proportional to the net force. If you want to increase the acceleration of an object, you must increase the net force acting on it. You can put a little squiggly line for acceleration is proportional to net force. Friction. Friction depends on the kinds of materials and how much they are pressed together. The cause of friction is that every surface, no matter how smooth it looks, has little bumps on it, and these bumps cause stickiness. So an example here is the friction between a crate on a smooth wooden floor is less than on a rough floor because the, there's fewer bumps on the smooth floor. Mass is the quantity of matter in an object. It also measures the inertia or sluggishness that an object exhibits in response to any effort made to start it or stop it or change its state of motion in any way. And weight is the force upon an object due to gravity. So here we have two anvils. If they're the same size and shape and if they're both made of iron, then they'll both have the same mass. But if this one's out in space, it has zero weight. Whereas this one's here on the earth, it has, it's, it has a lot of weight. So again, mass is the measure of inertia of an object. It's independent of gravity. Greater inertia means greater, greater mass. So here is an astronaut. He's got an anvil. He's way out in space. The anvil is weightless, but if he tries to shake it back and forth or accelerate it, he'll find it's difficult to do that. And that's because it has mass. It has the tendency to resist acceleration. Weight is the same thing as the force on an object due to gravity. The unit for weight is the newton. Another unit of weight is the pound. So mass and weight in everyday conversation are interchangeable. However, in physics, mass is the more fundamental unit. <clears throat> on the moon or on the earth, the weight of an object on the moon is less than the weight of the object on on Earth. So if this astronaut is holding up these objects, he, it'll be easier to hold it. However, the mass is the same on both locations. So if you're trying to shake it back and forth, it would be just as hard on the moon as it would be on Earth. Some conversions. One kilogram weighs 10 newtons, or 9.8 newtons to be precise, here on Earth. And one kilogram weighs 2.2 pounds at Earth's surface. One pound is the same thing as 4.45 newtons. Here we have a 10 pound weight, which has a mass of 4.54 kilograms. So the same force applied to twice the mass produces half the acceleration. If you apply the same force to three times the mass, it'll produce one third of the acceleration. So mass is is resisting acceleration. The acceleration of an object and the squiggly line, line means proportional to one over the mass. Okay, and this has nothing to do with friction. If you have this big earth mover that's three stories high, it's filled with dirt. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's on a frictionless surface, it's difficult to accelerate this thing. You'd need a lot of force and would only pick up speed very, very slowly. That's because mass resists acceleration. So, we come to Newton's second law. It relates acceleration to force. In word form, it is, the acceleration produced by net force on an object is directly proportional to the net force, is in the same direction as the net force, and is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So here's a guy pushing an elephant on roller skates. Uh, as he pushes, as he applies a greater net force, the acceleration is greater. Uh, and as you change the mass of the elephant, okay, increase the mass of the elephant, the acceleration is less. In equation form, it's A equals net force over mass. Example, net force is doubled, acceleration is doubled, the mass of an object is doubled, the acceleration is halved. Some more examples, you have this brick, and you have a 
force on it, which is accelerating it, it gets faster and faster. If you use two hands and press twice as much force on the same brick, it'll have twice as much acceleration. Back to the original force, if you push that force on two bricks, they'll accelerate half as much. But if you put two hands on two bricks, they'll go back to the same acceleration. Or the original force on three bricks, one third as much acceleration. Free fall. So, we know from before that the greater the mass of the object, the greater its force of attraction towards the Earth. That's the force of gravity. But also, smaller its tendency to move. The mass is inversely proportional to the, to the acceleration. So, it turns out that these two effects cancel. Okay? So, all objects of different masses have the same acceleration when they're in free fall. So, here's a single mass. Uh, it's, the force is F. Its mass is m, so its acceleration is g, f over m. Here is two masses. The force on it is twice as much, twice as much gravity. Divided by twice as much mass, you still get the same acceleration. Okay, so free fall is when the acceleration is g, 10 meters per second squared down. And Newton's second law provides an ex explanation for the equal accelerations of freely falling objects of various masses. And this is all true when air resistance is negligible. The acceleration depends on the force, uh, directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the inertia. Those, those things cancel. So non-free fall is when an object experiences, uh, or when an object falls downward through the air, it experiences an, a downward force of gravity and an air drag force upwards. So in real life, things are not in free fall because of this air drag force R upwards. So when the acceleration of the fall is less than G, we call this non-free fall, it occurs when air resistance is non-negligible. For example, these leaves as they fall from the tree, certainly air resistance is not negligible for them. So the air resistance depends on two things, how fast the object's traveling through the air and how much frontal surface area it has. Terminal speed is when the object is moving so fast that the force of gravity equals the air resistance. In this case, there's no net force, so no acceleration, so the velocity does not change. Here we have two parachutists, okay, and they're both they've both reached their terminal speed, where the weight equals the air resistance. Now, this guy's weight is more than this guy's weight, so the air resistance has to be more, so the terminal speed for this parachutist is greater. Uh, because air resistance increases with speed, so it'll fall faster for the uh, in, in order to be at terminal speed. So, non free fall example imagine a skydiver jumps from a plane. At first, weight is the only force, okay, because you're not moving very fast. But as the diver speeds up, air resistance builds up, increases. The net force is reduced and the acceleration becomes less and less until when the air resistance equals the diver's weight, the net force is zero and there's no more acceleration. This is called terminal velocity uh, and the diver just continues down at a constant speed. So a coin and a feather fall, take, fall or they're both dropped from rest and fall through this column of air. The feather reaches its terminal velocity very quickly, and it falls at a constant speed, reaching the bottom after the coin does. The coin <clears throat> falls very quickly, and air resistance doesn't build up to its weight over short falling distances, because it has a larger weight than the feather, which is why the coin hits the bottom so much sooner than the falling feather. However, if you pump out all the air from this jar so that it's a vacuum, then there's no air resistance on either object, and so they fall at the same rate, g.